This isn't getting better. Every day we meet new people. New people walk through our gate. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. They don't know what their next step's going to be. Sacramento is in crisis. Between 2015 and 2017, homelessness increased 30% in Sacramento County. The majority of homeless people are sleeping outdoors. According to the last point in time count, the number of unsheltered people grew by 85% in those years. And experts agree that people are undercounted. Last June, I was struck by a car, and the person just kept driving, like I was nothing. It's all bruise on my leg, but inside, it's like, how could you just leave somebody like that? Didn't even stop to check if I was okay, just kept going. It makes a person feel unworthy of, of air, of breath. It, it hurt a lot. I view this as one, the single biggest challenge to, um, to Sacramento becoming what we all want it to become, this great cosmopolitan city. Um, and it's a humanitarian issue. Places like Loaves and Fishes Friendship Park can provide a respite center for Sacramento's homeless, where they can warm up, get coffee, some meals, and connect with services. But it's not housing, and they can't sleep there. How I got here, I lived in Fresno for most of my life. My boyfriend and I moved to Sacramento in 09. I love it here. Two years ago, three years ago, he had his breakdown, his, what was that, midlife crisis. He quit his job, sold our house, told me out of our 15 years, only two were good. You know, he dropped me off in LA. Within six months, my whole world just collapsed. Broken, you can put back together, but at that point, I was shattered. If there could be any one little thing of life that happened to these folks that derailed everything, there's a lot of mental illness throughout the homeless community, uh, and, and it becomes difficult for them to manage a life. Life falls apart, and no one's there to help you. Beyond personal circumstances, studies have shown that what pushes people out to the streets here is the housing crisis. Rents in Sacramento increased faster than in any other metropolitan area in the country between 2017 and 2018, according to a Zillow study. Incomes are not keeping up with those rapid increases, so with that comes more homelessness. What's happening is San Francisco has just become insanely unaffordable. So that's impacting where people are moving, saying, you know, Sacramento looks pretty darn good in relative terms. Um, so people are moving here and then, you know, driving our prices up. We've got a 2% vacancy rate in Sacramento. Last year, both the city and the county declared a shelter emergency, meaning there aren't enough shelter beds on any given night for people to sleep in safely. Last September, Sacramento County stopped giving out anti-camping tickets after the U.S. Court of Appeals ruled that citing people for illegal camping is cruel and unusual punishment when that jurisdiction doesn't have enough shelter beds. But that hasn't stopped park rangers from what advocates call criminalizing homelessness. In fact, according to their own reported data, the number of encampments park rangers destroyed in January of this year is almost six times that of January of last year. And what happens to them then, right? It's, it's cold, it's raining, you know? They have nowhere to go and now you've taken away their things, you know? And then you're gonna write them silly tickets. You're gonna write them a ticket for having a cart in a park how else are they supposed to get their stuff around? Besides the surge in clearing encampments, since the rangers stopped issuing anti-camping citations, the number of tickets given for littering, having shopping carts in the park, and for attaching ropes to a tree have skyrocketed. I reached out to park rangers, and they sent a lengthy statement saying in part that they attribute the increase in encampments cleared to an increase in their own staffing, among other factors, and they don't deny the increase in other citations since they stopped handing out anti-camping tickets. The logic of the ruling was, well, if you don't have enough shelter, then you should really go out and create shelter. Our county took that ruling and said, well, we're just going to find a whole bunch of other ways to to uh, criminalize homeless people. 
Mayor Steinberg has made it his top priority to get people off the streets, into shelters, and ultimately rehoused. To end the shelter emergency, Steinberg challenged all eight districts to open up 100 shelter beds each, and is now making a $40 million proposal to open up and maintain those low-barrier triage centers over the next two years. You can't operate a job living in a tent on Ahern Street over here. It's not going to happen. You know, you can't operate a job, you can't do it effectively, you can't do it for very long, you can't keep up with basic things like hygiene, clean clothes, uh, rest, eating, taking care of yourself. You can't keep that up unless you have some, some place with a roof. So they need a place to live, they need supported, they need a break. How much of not having those shelter beds has to do with NIMBYism? NIMBYism is real. You want to continue this, don't intervene. You want to see the problem grow worse in your neighborhood? Don't intervene. Don't build the shelters. Of the mayor's $40 million plan, $37 million will come from the state, from the city's general fund, and from private donations. The conversation around homelessness has everything to do with housing. And some people might say $37 million is a lot of money for just shelter beds. This is a very good question, and it's actually one that I've struggled with. And I'll give you a real-life example. We are talking about a motel conversion with 120 beds. And so the choice is this, we can turnkey this as low barrier triage and get 120 people in right away, or we can make it a permanent supportive housing project, in which case we can only start with 50. It's a bit of a moral dilemma to me, because we do need both. But my choice, at least in the short run, is to make that, if we can make it work, low barrier triage because 120 people is more than 50. The hope is people will remain in shelters on average four months and receive the services and guidance that will get them into permanent, affordable, supportive housing where needed. You want them to have a chance to succeed. If you gave more people a chance to succeed, more people would succeed. It would absolutely amaze people that if those things became a priority, in helping the homeless, how this would turn around and how fast it would turn around. And who better than Joe to say that? For me, it was, it was alcoholism, right? I drank myself out of a life and uh, I lost my job, I lost my family, I lost my place to live. The only place for me to go was the streets. And then in 2011, my health failed and uh, the Sacramento Police Department was nice enough to once again take me to the VOA who got me some medical help who uh, gave me a place to stay, and uh, I proceeded to start to die. And uh, my liver was failing. It started to kind of turn around for me. I had to support, I had to support right when my life counted on it. My doctor said it's time to start getting up and moving around a little bit, uh, because it looks like you're gonna make it. He started volunteering, then working, and now he runs Friendship Park. He uses his personal experiences to empathize, support, and inspire. My story is not out of the question these days. I see it all the time here. You know, there's a couple of guys here who told me when they got here, I'm not going to be in this very long, you watch. <laughs> and sure enough, they're pushing out of it. If you can talk to the people who are watching us at home, safe and warm and with their kids in bed, what can we do? Support initiatives that expand shelter to keep people alive and keep people safe. Support affordable housing in your community and educate yourselves about homelessness. I hope Sacramento understands. I mean, yeah, we're out here. We're still human. We're still in the race. Please don't down nose or up nose us. It's just wrong.